Hey guys, Harry here. I'm back with another video. Uh, we're on another garage. Seems to be the common trend with all my videos, but that's the majority of the work I do is walls, garages, an odd plot here and there. But uh, since I have a one on one with my old man, uh, I tend to get more smaller jobs. But anyone knows garages and walls knows a, a pretty good piece of work to do, They're dead easy, and uh, that's what you want in the uh, in the brick lane game. It's ironic, but you know the more difficult and technical the work is, the less money you earn. So uh, it's it's the only sort of profession where this applies. But when it comes to price work, the simpler the better. So anyway, guys, uh, today I'm showing some footage of me building a corner. So this is a corner uh, with a one and a half brick pillar attached to it on the front of a garage. It's a typical uh, garage pillar. And uh, in this particular build today, I was working on my own. So my mentality behind doing this is to just uh, create ease of jointing. So this particular brick and the time of year, it's a very dry brick. Soaks up the moisture basically instantly. As soon as you've laid a brick, it's gone off. It's gone off and it's ready to join. So my, uh, my strategy today, as I could call it a strategy, because obviously, yeah, it's basically what it is was to basically work off two boards the entire day uh, I didn't actually end up getting any water today for the boards so I ended up making the mortar a little bit more sloppy to give it some more longevity and then I uh, proceeded it was a flat start this morning because I was on my own my dad wasn't here on this day so I ended up uh, just loading out the two packs of well the pack of bricks that we had and a few stragglers uh around majority of the front uh the two corners i was starting on on this side of the uh of the garage this cable and uh we uh well i just proceeded to uh stack the majority of the bricks on the corners I set up two boards, luckily on this site I'm on, there's plenty of manhole rings around just laying about the site, really tall ones so you've got basically a simulated uh, mortarboard stand really, so really effective for the uh, for getting your height of your mortarboards, so it's uh, really good for the pick and dip, but I set up um, the boards, as you can see two boards on this corner, and I used the six foot level to tail out 10 bricks long uh, to get a 20 course corner because the gable right next to where I'm working on the uh, on the house right next to where I'm working is 20 course so I just matched that with the garage uh, hopefully I had a big enough gap between the garage and the uh, gable to, uh, to you know to easily get a scaffold in so sometimes some jobs scaffolders will knock your garage a couple of uh, bricks off your garage when they're putting the scaffold up but uh, on this site, the scaffold is pretty, uh, you know, the pr it's, it's the scaffolding system they use is pretty uh, versatile, so it can it can get around these openings quite easy. And it is a bit of a narrower, it's a narrower setup on the scaffold. So hopefully they'll be able to put the tubes uh, in behind this garage once it's built. So uh, I only went twenty course today. Um, I normally like to try to get to about 22 because that's what height the safety deck goes in. You have a 1500 short uh, short leg for the safety deck and then obviously your safety deck's around like 100 mil so it's about 150 ideally so that's 22 course. So I only got it to 20 today which you know it's no big deal. Could have maybe stretched a couple of extra course but didn't see the point really because uh, I like to leave enough on a garage Normally the garage is 29 course, I'll have to leave enough on a garage for another day's work. So uh, most garages are around 75 bricks a course. So if you leave nine course on it, so 10 course would be 750, take away. Uh, so 675, you leave, you said 675 bricks um, with nine course around a garage uh, to do. So it's a nice day's work for anyone uh, who has to square it up to wall plate. Or it's a, you know, it's bad a day's work for me. On a good day, 675 breaks, that's a good day. That's a really good day for me, you know, a, a, a very good day. So if, uh, if I, if I manage to get uh, 700 bricks in in a day, 
that's a, a mega success, you know what I mean? But um, <clears throat> today, the plan was two corners, run them in, executed that pretty easily. Uh, just the day went well, really. All the bricks were st stacked right next to this gable that I just had a pack of bricks stacked right next to it. Uh, easily could unload them with the brick clamps. And then also got the mortar tub right behind my uh, right behind my spot board, so I didn't have to bucket any mortar today, just all with a shovel. Uh, I try and just be really organised when it comes to working on my own. Um, I tend to do a lot of level work. Obviously, tailing out ten course with a uh, ten bricks on with a level, you know, you're staying in one spot, but you're still, you know, you're building the corner, but you're also, uh, you know, laying a quite a, you know, substantial amount of bricks without moving from one spot, because. Uh, as I said before about the dry bricks, jointing becomes a massive hassle. So every four cores, I was jointing up on the corner. And then same again, when I was running in, it was four cores. I've got footage of both corners building today. Um, I got it, I started recording around the middle of the corner. So I could get a few cores on, about four or five cores on camera. And it was uh, showing different methods of, you know, traditional corner building. On the iMovie software I'm using right now, um, the recording uh, dial is take is basically covering up what I'm doing on the video, so I'm a little bit blind to what I'm actually doing on the video because it's just right in my right in the field of view. But um, as you can see, I'm using I've, this. Is, I'm just trying to remember this from memory, but I'm using uh, the flat spread technique for traditional, uh, basically using. You know, just laying out your spread normally, and then just flatten it out with a trowel. I found that I find that's the easiest way to get a consistent spread for building corners. Because uh, the idea for building corners, and my mentality behind building corners is, is you're basically getting better with your level. You know, it's it's basically level practice. And the idea of building the corner efficiently and fast is laying your bricks more or less level and plumb without touching them with the level. You know, it's a bit of the an old school bricklayers. <laughs> bricklayer's wives tale as you could say that uh the you know a bricklayer should be able to lay the bricks gauge level and plumb without the level and then basically just using the level to check that you know everything's in the correct position uh which you know you know in you know for someone who masters building corners which was the common place in bricklaying before the before the popularization of profiles uh, which came from Europe, I do believe. With some of, some, with, from what I've heard from first-hand accounts, profiles were first seen when guys were going into Germany and stuff. People used to use big bits of timber. This is just from other bricklayers telling me this, but I've looked into it a little bit as well. And uh, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of the old school guys just used to build corners. So, you know, I'm a big advocate of you know corner building because it just shows you know general bricklaying skill, being able to use a level. You know, you, you know, I have a word that there's a lot of bricklayers who I speak to who say, oh, I only I only use profiles, fucking hell, using the level's a waste of time. And, you know, you you watch them pick up a level and it's like they've picked an alien up. They don't, you know, it, it looks foreign in their hands. So if you can keep, your, you know, your, your skill with a level, it'll just carry you through doing any sorts of work that you come across, especially like, you know, like today, the garage was set out, it was tanked, it had a couple of course, wrap round it and it was and there was no space for a profile unless you had like a freestanding profile <coughs> like them goalposts <coughs> which i think goalposts should stick on the football field and not on not on building sites i'm not a big fan of them <coughs> <coughs> uh, sorry uh, but um yeah uh basically i i find it I, f I find every time I build a corner, I get a little bit faster at building them. Uh, I find it actually enjoyable building the corner because you're not actually, uh, you know, it's a little bit more intricate. You know, you're, you're laying the bricks in different way. Each brick, you're laying it slightly different way. Uh, I get to use traditional method a lot, which, you know, I enjoy laying traditional. Uh, but I, the only reason I don't do it uh, for long runs is just because it's slower, a lot slower than pick and dip. Um, pick and dip's basically... Uh, the only reason I do it is not because, you know, I can't lay traditional fast, you know, I've laid, um, I've not not quite laid it, you know, not quite laid as many 
breaks traditional as I have pick and dip because pick and dip is just faster overall. But you know, I'm I'm within a hundred bricks of my pick and dip. You know, I'm within hundred and fifty bricks of my pick and dip speed to my traditional. Um, you know, the only reason I use it is because it takes less effort and it's faster. So you know, when you're on price, especially when I'm on, you know, when I'm on day work doing, you know, you know, finishing off someone else's work or you know, fixing, making alterations, I'll play I'll traditional because you know you're not on you're not on price, but. On price, there's no, there's no reason in my mind why you wouldn't lay like, pick and dip to a line. It just, you know, there's a few guys, uh, you know, a few of the bricklayers on site I talk to regular. They've converted to pick and dip. They just, people are doing it. So, you know, there's more people I talk to finding out about it, and they're just, they're seeing the benefits. So, you know, why wouldn't you? It's, it's just basically free money. It's free money by just laying more bricks instantly. Takes. You know, obviously it does take skill to learn the pick and dip and, you know, I find that people who lay traditional for years and years will find the benefit of pick and dip more or less instant. But if you're learning it as a ranked novice, obviously it'll, you know, you're going to you're gonna be as slow traditional as you were doing pick and dip starting out. You know, you, you know it's something that you've got to learn after you learn through the traditional method. So when it comes to the, uh, the corner building itself, um, using the uh, using the level and etc cetera, etc cetera on the pillar. I try not to fill my perps too uh, too much on the pillar side. That'd be a common thing people will tell you uh, when you're building pillars. Don't fill your perps. Just keep them a bit empty. Give you you know, you know your pillar a bit of room to move. Uh, when I'm putting my level up the brickwork, I don't tend to put my foot to the bottom of it because these types of bricks we're using the faces and aristas are quite curvy and they have funny shaped bricks. And you can easily start cockling your level around on an uneven brick that you've uh, that you've put your level against. So I tend to just stroke my level up and down the up and down the wall. You know, hold it flat with my hand. I don't tend to put my foot against it. It's a pretty amateur error that you see a lot of people using the foot foot against the level method, but it does give you a different reading than than just you just putting the level against the wall. I find if anyone's going to put the level up your wall, they're just going to hold it on your wall and not actually put the foot against it. Uh, you know, it is you know, I've seen pe- I've seen people checking people's work by putting the foot on the level, and they're basically just sending the level out of plumb by basically it's basically hitting it with your foot. If you, and anyone knows if you hit your level with your trowel, it moves the bubble. So you've got to uh, you know you try to just hold it on free on you know just hold your level on you know stroke it up and down the wall check for gaps, and uh, yeah. When I'm starting building as well, I always got my two foot level in hand. I never really start attempting any corner builds without the two foot level. Uh, 